clip, he went to the toilets when he was just using the lows we got there. And he said, you guys had better be good. Now, I'm standing there, right? Doing what I'm doing, I'm using the loo. I do not want to be threatened by an American, German, biking dude with his own club. And uh, it turns out they booked us on country night. Right, not a true story, no, I'm not sorry to mention it. Right? And um, in walked these little American Dolly Parton types with their white cowboy boots on. And, uh, you know, it, it was all the sort of the southern thing going on. And uh, I ended up having to play five Credence Clearwater Revival songs in the middle of the set. Right? Because I actually thought we were going to get killed at one point. And I can tell you this, right? This is what happened. A guy called Bron Burbank. Right, we played with a few days earlier. Do you know Bron? Is he from Utah? I don't bloody know. I think he is. Is he? Yeah. He's an acoustic guy. Uh, I, I don't know. Is I can't remember that. I, uh, I'm from America. But he was Bron, Bron Burbank. He's got his own band. I don't know what he's doing. He was in a band we played with for a while. But uh, he walked in with a big bucket with tips written on it. And he started doing his show, you know, show ring leader thing telling all these people to give us tips. And I honestly believe, right, if he hadn't been there and I'd shout on a corner, we probably would have been killed. <laughs> what is that bad? You know? It was amazing. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's the way it goes. You should have done what Neil Diamond did. What's Started that? being you all my sunshine. <laughs> I'm not worried about Neil Diamond. Hang on now. But I do like rocks. Am I off? Is it happening? Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is a song about um, living <coughs> every day to his fullest and every minute to his fullest. And um, it's called Minute.
Don't you? So you want to do something like this, because um, there's only like guitar solos and stuff everywhere, so all the songs are a little bit shorter. So if you can get to go to the Chinese a little bit earlier. <laughs> Um, this next song is, is all about people that go through really bad divorces and stuff and they end up sort of sitting in a flat with a suitcase and a, and a really, really bad portable TV thinking, what just happened in my life? And uh, sometimes you're all right, but I, I nicked the idea from a band called Free and um, the lyric went about, you know, take everything I own except my guitar and my car and uh, that's pretty much the size of it, you know. Anybody that's ever sat in a stool like this knows what that's about. Um, it's called Leave My Heart. You can take a king and you knock him off of his throne. Thank you for everybody that's come along tonight. I know this is a relatively new thing. Uh, big thanks to Mikey and, and Tim for 
putting this all together. And for George, again, for keeping this place going, it's a, it's a great little place. And if every valley's town had one of these, then uh, I can't think of a better place in the world to live. No? Apart from Columbia or somewhere like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. Oh, am I? <laughs> oh, am I? <laughs> um, sometimes in your life you get treated like dirt. And, uh, the only answer, yeah, I know it's all happy songs, ladies and gentlemen. I grew up on a Wombles, and I. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you gotta, you, the only question you've got is, are you fucking serious? Are you really doing that? So, uh, you know, sometimes you're lucky enough to get the right songs about it. And um, this is a song where people are can't end fucking doing stupid stuff. So this is called Devil's Letter.
Maar jullie take 50 pence to the balloon, so I was going to grab them for the half a song. <laughs> Next time, I make sure, right, that I've at least got either more money, or I bring my own balloons. Um, I like the fact that 18 written on them, which I like it, how only every man in this room feels. Right. All the time. <laughs> Leave it upside down. <laughs> oh, okay. That's alright. That'll be about my about 11 o'clock, I will, won't it? <laughs> right. Um, I'm in a process of writing some stuff for a new album. Um, the band I play in, we, we say we're going to write as a band for the next one, so any stuff that doesn't get used, I'll, uh, I'll be putting out as a solo album. And um, it'll be a double album. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, it's a concept album. <laughs> um, I'm going to play a song I haven't played, I'm going to say, for about 10 years. Um, it's one of the ones I've been digging up and trying to find some various things for, you know, to find inspiration from. It's one of the first songs I ever wrote. Um, so, if I make a mistake, right, if Facebook's watching, tough shit. This is a song about an apology. Um, I'm trying to find a way to say sorry. This is called Anyhow.
Where did you say you know the play? I bet they couldn't remember it. So I did it. <laughs> So I just practice it. Ah, oh, that's alright. Practice in your own time. <laughs> this is my own time. What do you mean? Um, I wrote a song which is on our second album. Um, Johnny Owen, who's obviously one of Merthyr's most celebrated sons. Um, I spent, I'm going to say, a year and a half talking to his family, um, basically going over and having coffee and having a chat to his brothers about whether or not we could use his imagery and his, and his story for our album. And uh, I was one of the first people, I think, in about, I'm going to say, 15 years, who they actually gave permission to use some stuff. Uh, they gave me some really, really personal family photographs. And the only, the only way that I could sort of express to them what I wanted to do was talk about the positive nature of his life. They've had American film directors come to them and say, oh, we want to focus on the Pinto fight, and we want to do this, and we want to do that. And they said no, because they wanted to focus on the positive aspect of his life. So I said, look, what I want to do is celebrate the guy that would be chopping wood at 6 o'clock in the morning, or the guy that was running up in the mountains at you know, running up in the mountains at five o'clock in the morning. And uh, the guy that loved his family. And the one stipulation was that I use a photograph of him and his mum, because apparently one of the things that they said was he loved his mother with all his heart. And uh, it was one of those things where I've been through difficult times and everybody sometimes has got a sort of a thing, you know, whether it's a black dog on their back or whatever it is, but it's always, Hopefully you get that point where you feel a little bit lighter. And uh, this is a song called Light as a Feather. And it's for uh, Johnny's family.
Sitting on a stool, shouting and screaming, and uh, it's the most changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I support it. Not my underwear um, or my attitude to life, which is never changing your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> inside out, then back to front. I know why. Um, I, <laughs> I played a gig in London a couple of years ago, and we were on stage. And very often, my mind ruins whatever's coming out of my mouth. Um, my brain destroys. I, I mean, it was, um, you know, it was Woody Guthrie when he wrote uh, this machine kills fascists, um, etched into his acoustic. And uh, I got this brain kills Richard's mouth. Because every now and again, things happen, and I, I can't help it. It's just one of those. Um, and that's where it goes. <laughs> no, Juliet, thank you very much. Thank you, Juliet. Have a safe journey. Marvelous. And enjoy tomorrow. Um, yeah, I had to change the lyric because we were recording the song live for an album. And um, I changed it to all about the people who decide they're going to take our freedom by making us fearful of weapons and bombs and men with things strapped to them. You know, I'm torn up, and I. Just in case I'm afraid of the enemy. Look at the girls, and as soon as I Come on, let's sit down. You want a bit, yeah? This is a song uh, for all the people who think it's okay to hide behind books which were written a long time ago and um, sometimes things are not relevant or just not true. This is called Bones. Pierce your bones with a needle I want you to pierce my bones I'm in your life with a phone call you to put down your phones Cause if you are Walls 
Solos and stuff. Shout out to Gavin Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Um, songwriter night, blah blah blah, da 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 da. da. Um, ironic, I was. I know, it. I prefer to think it's iconic, but you know, we, we won't go there. So. Um, normally, right, the, the band I play, and we've had great reviews for the albums and stuff, which we've all talked about big choruses and all that sort of thing, which is really, really nice. Um, because they start off really small on, on an acoustic guitar, but even smaller inside my brain. I'd be the guy on the side of the road with an iPhone, right? Shouting absolute gibberish into his phone, hoping that by the time I get home, I haven't forgotten what I'm doing, what I'm saying. <laughs> you laugh, and you two play guitar, you know about that stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm also the guy who pulls up in the, <laughs> the fucking traffic, like singing his head off my... Amazing time in Cardiff once there's a guy, I'm, I'm into my rock music, right? And there's a guy blasting, right? Motley Crew, in these terrible band loads of cocaine and women everywhere, right? He was brilliant. <laughs> and he's, he's got his, <laughs> I can hear the music coming in his car. So, true to form, I go, I hey, part of 11,000 songs. And it's what I did. I slapped the song on quick like that and got it to the same place. I'm tapping the window and with his lights. And then nothing's changing, it's brilliant. And all of a sudden, it's me and him singing the same song in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit best peeper, but then no one ever. It's absolute class beyond anything you can imagine. Honestly. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of guy I am. But yeah, um, so sometimes I like to try and challenge myself, but I tried to write a song which had a bigger verse than the chorus. Um, and I wanted to do something that was a little bit different. Uh, so it's an old one, but I'm using opportunities to post my out, I guess, tonight, and, um, you know, let's hope nothing else gets pulled out by anybody, and nobody gets arrested. Wow. 
Um, as a writer, you sit at home sometimes and you think about what you can write about and who you can write about and what you're thinking at that time. More often than not, and I refer to Christian, and I don't know if, if you, you do this right, but do you come up with an absolute gibberish sometimes and then you've got to try and find syllables and stuff to... Because I, 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 the, the new, not a little flash ad, a little, a little dog, and they're using that Queen song, and they put about 3,000 syllables in the wrong place. And honestly, right? There was this craze where people used to break their TVs with Wii remotes. I, I'm, if I ever catch the guy, right, who's written that flash ad, I'm going to kick the shit through in you, live on TV. Right? Don't use too many syllables, kids, it doesn't work. Right? <laughs> But uh, yeah, but sometimes you get, you do something and you think, okay, it's got a bit of gravity to it. This is a song all about how the government treat our military, our personnel, our service women and our service men. And um, I never realized the importance of songwriting before. You know, obviously it was there, but until I spoke to a guy called Wolf in London who lost a lot of his family members in conflict in Croatia and he gave me a big hug and said you say the things that I cannot say to my government and years after writing this song I'm still meeting people who say that the words have a certain gravity and they still can't explain how war and how fighting makes them feel so this is a song for all the homeless soldiers who are still on our streets who lose their arms, they lose their legs, they lose their minds and their families and they come home and the government says, thank you very much, off you go. And uh, this is Richard who's probably, hopefully, okay. Because um, the last time I spoke to him, he was lying <coughs> on a blanket in Cardiff with a cup of coffee. This is called Second Hand Soldier. <laughs>
fucking loud for ten. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to try a new song out. I haven't played it before. Really under your ears, right? So if things start going at you all, just go, oh, Rich, I was amazing. Right? We've been doing that for years, Rich. <laughs> oh, it's a continuation of the story, you know. Well, I'm going to play it slowly, right? So if I make a mistake, I'll start having a chat. <laughs> I used to do this thing, but it was ad libbing in the middle of the song, right? But it wasn't, it was just as I'm talking and trying to remember the words. Yeah. Right? And uh, I might do it tonight. So who knows? I might be kicking it old school. I saw there was 17 in my body. 18? I love the way the balloons are black. They symbolize the end of childhood. <laughs> That's a, that's a Goo Goo Dolls song. Black well, Balloon. There's a silence in the sound You hear in the breeze The dreams are found You find them in the leaves You find them when the ghosts of summer's gone between the trees It's just a sound that you breathe it out It could be nothing at all It's just your body you leave it it's just a sign of your soul You better run You better fly You better learn to crawl Find another way home You better hide You better fly You better learn to crawl Find another way home Drowning on their knees The chance of dreams are found You find them in the leaves You find them where the ghosts are spent to move between the trees It's just a sign of breathing Tape off, not him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I sounded like it. Anyway, um, 
Thank you, Tom. That was a song about nothing. <laughs> that was a song about, that was about, you don't quite know what it is. Um, it was a song about whatever it is that you find, whether it's people you've lost, whether it's people you've still yet to find, um, whether it's people you've met, whether it's lovers, whether it's people you've hated, whether it's people you've fought against. And um, it's all about that end game where if you're not prepared to take what's coming or what's been, uh, you live your life, then you better hide or you better fly or you better learn to crawl or find another way home. So that's where it comes from. Um, I'm normally quite serious. That was a joke song. <laughs> <laughs> um, this next song is all about fighting to get out of bed in the morning. Um, it's one of our most loved tracks. Um, and it's one of those songs that people always think, you know, you're fighting with depression or you're doing whatever you're doing. And people always think, ah, you'll be all right, just, just get out of bed, you'll be fine. And it's not about that. But it's about people who always try to take something from you, no matter what it is, whether it's a couple of minutes of your day, whether it's money or whether it's your pride or anything. Um, and it's about going, do you know what? They'll try and take your soul, but before you lose it, fight for a brighter day. And that's what that's all about. This is called Before the Matinee. Under the moonlight Before the matinee Before the second show Before the light of day I step in the street lights Where I found my way Before the cars went slow Before the light of day I got so damn lost Left in the middle Took it all inside which I'm going to play and I'm going to tell a little story because it's all about stories and songs. Just want to say a big thank you to Christian for keeping playing tonight. Um, rule is, whenever you break a string, you just keep going. You know? And that's, that's a good rule to keep, that is. 
I like that little guitar as well. That was good. You know? No, I said, uh, have you heard Eddie Vedder stuff? Do you like, do you like him? Right. What you want to do when you go home or in the car or whatever, there's a great album by the singer of Pearl Jam, um, Eddie Vedder, and it's called Ukulele Songs. And, um, <laughs> I didn't know. But yeah, check out Eddie Vedder ukulele songs. The song is played on a ukulele for the uh, for the uninitiated. I'm going to try and remember the words to this because uh, it's a great song. If you want to have a little sing, you're welcome to. I might balls it up, but it's the last song of the night. Um, the story goes, uh, I'm sitting in a pub in Aberdeen and Kelly's home from London. And, you know, he's come down to home to have a few drinks with the boys. And we spent an evening in a pub called The Globe, sitting back and forth, passing the guitar back and forth. And he played every single stereophonic song in his, in his arsenal, or the ones he could remember. And then the more we were going, three, yeah. But the more we go on, right? We're passing us up back and forth, and of course, everybody is stereophonics mad, it's brilliant because I love it, I'm so proud of the boy, right? And then all of a sudden, I pulled this track out, and I'll never forget him saying to me, bastard. He said, hey, all, all this stuff, he said, like, what am I going to do after that? And he, and he was right. But, but that led, right, to me going up to the Albert Hall in London. I, I'm not doing this name checking shit now, please don't think, but you know, it's, it's the other side of life, right? So he says to me, that was really good. Do you want to do another song? And I played a different track again. He said, I'll be doing that in the Albert Hall on, on uh, Wednesday night. Do you want to come up? And I said, hi, great, you know, it was one of those things. Well, anyway, what I didn't know at the time was I was going on stage with Paul Weller, Ronnie Wood, Ronnie, oh. right, and Adam from a stage one. <laughs> and um, I was walking off stage and Paul Weller said to me, all right, man, he said, don't give me a day job. And I'm so annoyed by that fact, right? Because as I was walking away, I said to him, have you seen the Style Council videos? And he didn't hear me, oh. right? I was devastated, but all I know is I never had one of those yellow jumpers around my neck, <laughs> driving a boat down the lake. Yeah. Right? Check it out, honestly, you now. Give up my day job, my ass. You know, doing your wardrobe, like. But, uh, but yeah, after that, I gave up my day job. <laughs> I did, yeah. True story. You want to ruin my life, Paul Weller? I'll do it myself. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, I'm telling you. It would have been brilliant that night. I only wish I could have told him. But next time I see him, I let him know. Oh, well, I was going to jump at him back. <laughs> day after day, I'm more confused. Look for the light in a falling rain You know it's a game that I hate to lose But I'm feeling strange Let me shame all the people
joy that you've given me I want you to know I believe in your soul It's rhythm and rhyme and harmony You help me along I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away Christian and Juliet and Dave for coming over and uh, big thanks to George and all his team here who've got a great venue, great pub and um, you know Merth has a great place because of people like Mike you've put this on tonight and uh, thank you very much for Guys have a safe journey home and I'll uh, see you next time.